a 2-1 comeback victory last week. Memphis 901 FC looks to continue a bright start to the season against a familiar foe in Indy 11. It's USL Championship Soccer, and it's next. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to USL Championship Soccer on a glorious day in the Bluff City. You couldn't ask for better weather, better pitch conditions, and a better day to be with us watching a little 901 FC soccer. Peter Edmiston alongside University of Memphis former player J.J. Greer. And J.J., I know you kind of want to be out there today on, on a day like this, but you'll have to settle for watching it with me, and it should be a fun one. Memphis taken on Indy 11. These are two teams that know each other very well, but of course, now they're on opposite sides of the conference. Opposite sides of the conference. I'm expecting a really tough match tonight for 901 FC. I think they should get the victory. It's a gorgeous day, as you mentioned. They're also at home here at AutoZone Park. Beautiful weather. Hopefully a, a great crowd tonight. I expect 901 FC to really be strong defensively, and I expect you know, Knight Pickering and some of those guys to really get on the score sheet tonight. Well, you mentioned Knight Pickering. He's going to have a, a lot to live up to after last week's performance. He was sensational scoring the USL Championship goal of the week with this left-footed screamer. What a strike that was. 25-yard left-footed strike for Knight Pickering. The 19-year-old had a big week last week. That performance also earned him an alternate spot in the Week 1 USL Championship Team of the Week. The good news didn't stop there either for Pickering. As 901 FC announced yesterday, he's been called up to the US U U19 Men's National Team Camp in Morocco. He's playing with a ton of confidence. And as I said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if he got on the score sheet this afternoon. Well, you know, 19-year-olds have a lot of energy, and that's good because right after this match, he's going to be heading to the airport and flying across the ocean to Morocco to link up with the U19 national team there. Meanwhile, on the other side, player to watch for Indy 11, Jack Blake, a USL Championship Week 1 Team of the Week member after a terrific performance against Oakland. The midfielder from Nottingham, England, is in his second year with the Indy 11 and in his seventh season overall in the USL Championship. Veteran player and a stalwart in midfield for every club he plays for. Scored a very tidy goal last week versus Oakland Roots. Great finisher. He's got great vision and poise on the ball. 901 FC will need to lock on bucking on him tonight defensively. We're looking forward to this one and glad you are with us. Opening kickoff, starting lineups, and more when we come back. Last week, Memphis 901 FC looks to continue a bright start to the season against a familiar foe in Indy 11. It's USL Championship Soccer, and it's next.
off a 2-1 comeback victory last week, Memphis 901 FC looks to continue a bright start to the season against a familiar foe in Indy 11. It's USL Championship Soccer, and it's next. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to USL Championship Soccer on a glorious day in the Bluff City. You couldn't ask for better weather, better pitch conditions, and a better day to be with us watching a little 901 FC soccer. Peter Edmiston alongside University of Memphis former player J.J. Greer. And J.J., I know you kind of want to be out there today on, on a day like this, but you'll have to settle for watching it with me, and it should be a fun one. Memphis taking on Indy 11. These are two teams that know each other very well, but of course, now they're on opposite sides of the conference. Opposite sides of the conference. I'm expecting a really tough match tonight for 901 FC. I think they should get the victory. It's a gorgeous day, as you mentioned. They're also at home here at AutoZone Park. Beautiful weather. Hopefully a, a great crowd tonight. I expect 901 FC to really be strong defensively, and I expect you know, Knight Pickering and some of those guys to really get on the score sheet tonight. Well, you mentioned Knight Pickering. He's going to have a, a lot to live up to after last week's performance. He was sensational scoring the USL Championship goal of the week with this left-footed screamer. What a strike that was. 25-yard left-footed strike for Knight Pickering the 19-year-old had a big week last week. That performance also earned him an alternate spot in the Week 1 USL Championship Team of the Week. The good news didn't stop there either for Pickering. As 901 FC announced yesterday, he's been called up to the U.S. U U19 Men's National Team Camp in Morocco. He's playing with a ton of confidence. And as I said earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if he got on the score sheet this afternoon. Well, you know, 19-year-olds have a lot of energy, and that's good because right after this match, he's going to be heading to the airport and flying across the ocean to Morocco to link up with the U19 National Team there. Meanwhile, on the other side player to watch for Indy 11, Jack Blake, a USL Championship Week 1 Team of the Week member after a terrific performance against Oakland. The midfielder from Nottingham, England is in his second year with the Indy 11 and in his seventh season overall in the USL Championship. Veteran player and a stalwart in midfield for every club he plays for. Scored a very tidy goal last week versus Oakland Roots. Great finisher. He's got great vision and poise on the ball. 901 FC will need to lock on bucking on him tonight defensively. We're looking forward to this one and glad you are with this opening kickoff, starting lineups, and more when we come back. Welcome back. Memphis 901 FC taking on Indy 11. And 
What would a 901 FC match be without a guitar smash to start things off? That is just the way it should be on this St. Patrick's Day weekend. I see a lot of the Bluff City Mafia clad in a little green today. Now we look at the starting lineups beginning with the visitors from Indy 11. And as we mentioned, of course, you know, some of the players to watch. Uh, Jack Blake is fantastic. And on top of that, a, a really kind of a reshaped back line, but a team that was really good last week and just kind of kind of fell to some bad luck. Yeah, good back line, but I'm really impressed with that front line with uh, Sebastian Guinzotti, Augustine Williams. Those are some bona fide goal scorers up top and a really a veteran midfield as well with Tyler Gibson, Cam Lindley, and Jack Blake in there. Meanwhile, for a 901 FC lineup looking very similar to last week, the two goal scorers, Samuel Carriaga and Knight Pickering in the starting 11, uh, along with that uh, new look defensive pairing. Uh, of course, Carson Von Stieg has been here, but then Tulu uh, joining uh, this year, and uh, I think they've looked uh, pretty darn good early on. Yeah, it looks like the only substitutions in there versus last week. Oscar Jimenez sliding in at right back and Carson Bumstieg sliding in at center back. But other than that, a lot of the same players in there and I expect another strong performance here at home. So we are set to get uh, underway and of course, welcome to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. Throughout the month of March, the USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. And indeed, we are underway here. Truly, you could not ask for a better day for soccer. It is mid-60s. The sun is shining. Barely a cloud in the sky. And this is the day that you want to get out there and play. And these two teams, certainly a lot to play for. Indy 11 looking to bounce back from the disappointment from last week. And, of course, 901 FC looking to continue a bright start to the season. Indy 11 with an early attack, repelled and cleared away. What needs to happen for 901 FC to continue their good play? Get off on the fast start. You know, right now it looks like Indy 11 is on the front foot right now. Uh, only the first 30 seconds or so as we see Akeem Ward time and time again always so strong in the tackle and strong in the ball. But 901 FC needs to get it to a fast start here at home. Indy 11 getting that ball right back into the box, headed up by Bob Stieg and Tyler Derrick. No problem gathering that good, comfortable play. And it's always nice to get the keeper an easy touch early in the game to kind of get him involved. Tulu kicking it back, getting Derek uh, an extra touch. He'll try to clear it away, and nice long pass out to Akeem Ward, who has floated up that sideline as Stephen Glass's squad looks to build. Of course, so Stephen Glass consolidating from last year and starting to build his own style of play. And that we saw as the year went on last year, you saw more and more consistency from this group. And a lot expected from this 901 FC group this year. Certainly have done very well in the transfer market and have uh, acquired some really good young talent. As you see, Stephen Glass there starting to build the way he wants to. The uh, a former Newcastle player, now, of course, 901 FC coach. You know, when you lose players like Aaron Malloy and Jeremy Kelly, these are some of the best players in the USL championship. Uh, you know, you, there could be some question marks there, but then you bring in, you know, Nico Breck and Zach Duncan in midfield for 901 FC. And time and time again, this this 901 FC front office has just continued to bring in some of the best players in the league. Yeah, and guys like Emerson Hindman, who have uh, you know, played a little bit last year and are now expected to kind of flourish. Same thing with Knight Pickering, who is now kind of in year three, but is you know, really has been brought on kind of slowly as a 17-year-old when he arrived. And now a 19-year-old who is starting to make some noise and get a lot of interest from a lot of clubs around the world and getting called up to the U19 national team and playing on that big stage is not going to do anything to dissuade that level of interest. And the way he plays, you see he's, you know, he's so talented, both feet, very versatile, and a real uh, heads-up player. He plays a, a lot kind of a more veteran game than his age would suggest. Absolutely. To put it simply, when he's on the field, Pete, when he, Peter, when he gets minutes, he produces. And that's exactly what you want from, from your striker, uh, the 19-year-old Knight Pickering. You can also see physically, it looks like there's an offside call here on Augustine Williams. You can also see him physically. You know, it looks like he's bulked up a little bit. He's he's put on a little bit of man strength now, maybe, and, and we're seeing the, the fruits of the fruits of his hard work. It's hard to be patient sometimes with younger players because you know they can come on so quickly, but 
oftentimes being patient will, will, will pay dividends. And I think the development has really done a, a nice job. Caleb Sewell and the, and, and the personnel staff here have done an excellent job of kind of creating that environment for, for him to flourish. Meanwhile, you're seeing 901 FC make their foray down the field. Some tight and passing along the sideline. Heinemann from Carriaga takes it over to Vom Stieg. Vom Stieg looking. Bruno Lapa push. No call. Oh, wow. Referee Sergei Dimanchuk, a USL championship veteran. Maybe going to let him play just a little bit. Indy takes advantage of that with a cross. Was that deflected or is that going to be out for a goal kick? No, it's going to be out for a goal kick. As Indy 11 last week, 20 shots. From that man's team, Sean McCauley. It's his first year in India. Fellow Scotsman alongside Stephen Glass. And he's probably wondering how in the heck did they lose that one. They had two players in the USL Championship Team of the Week. <laughs> no other team had more than one. So they lost the game. Had 20 shots last week, which was uh, tied for the most they had all of last year. Blake, Jack Blake had six on his own. Somehow they lost the match. It's... Soccer's weird sometimes, JJ. You said, you said it right there, Peter. As we know, soccer can be a very cruel sport sometimes. You know, sometimes you're not always rewarded uh, for, all the, for all the chances created. Now here's an opportunity. Akeem Ward, right-footed cross into a dangerous area. Well cleared. And a couple of headers later, the very first corner of the match goes Memphis 901 FC's way. And Oscar Jimenez trots over to take it. Jimenez... As you mentioned, jumping into the lineup this afternoon. Taking it from one of the only spots on the field where there is a little bit of shadow. That right corner. We'll see what the set piece situation looks like for 901 FC. Five in the box to aim for. Good cross. Well cleared out, though, as that was Danny Barbier who got a strong head to it. Shipped back into a dangerous position. Heinemann did well to get a foot to it, but could not control it from there. Cleared out by Barbier. Throw into 901 FC. First corner of the game ends up relatively tame. With all said and done, but a dangerous area that Jimenez put that ball into. Really dangerous area, but that back line for Indy 11, they're huge. Peter, when you look across Aiden Stanley, Josh O'Brien, uh, Daniel Barbier, Callum Chapman Page, just some real monsters on the back line for Indy 11. So 901 FC, it might be, you might want to switch up the tactics maybe instead of trying to whip in balls uh, as an aerial threat, maybe keep the ball on the floor, uh, get some combination play. Yeah, it, it, this is not quite as big a team at the back line as it was last year and in years past. We've seen uh, some, some pretty big boys uh, line up for 901 FC, 6'2 and 6' foot for Tulu and Von Stieg across that back line. Ball sprayed out kind of wildly, and that's going to be out for a throw in the 11. Just underway into the seventh minute. Peter Edmiston, J.J. Greer with you. So thrilled that you can join us uh, here this, this afternoon. Both teams still trying to find a little bit of rhythm in, in the early going of this matchup. Now that's some really nice work there from Carriaga who fights into the tackle but could not control it. Out of play to Indy 11. Still looking for that first kind of spark of activity with J.J., but both these teams are certainly full of quality. Now, this has been a pretty prolific matchup as 901 FC is unbeaten in their last eight against uh, Indy 11, including five victories. No call there. Knight Pickering able to bring it down and so far, the referee consistently allowing them to play. Sergei Demianchuk, we shall see if that continues. Ball went out of play, and they did not call it. Now they drag it back because the referee's assistant on that far side. And we've got a early yellow card going to Callum Chapman Page of Indy 11 for something that he said. He immediately drew the ire of Dinanchuk. It's awfully early to be picking up a yellow card if you are a member of that back line. That's some pretty dangerous position for Indy 11 to be in. I think that was a signal that Dinanchuk is officially not going for it no, this no, afternoon. <laughs> no, he is No, he is not. Callum Chapman Page, perhaps a little mouthy. All right, everybody. <laughs> You're on warning. Yeah, I think the I think Zip the the, the signal has been uh, the warning has been made. <laughs> That's right. An early yellow does tend to uh, 
certainly set a tone. And JJ, you're, I'm sure you remember playing, and then you'd see an early yellow for something like that. It, as a player, you kind of say, okay, all right, this, this, the, the official's pretty serious out there now. Well, that could, that could really be an important yellow card. That's a center back mm -hmm. for Indy 11. It, and so as a center back, picking up a really a silly yellow card like that so early in the game, not even on a tackle, right, just for uh, uh, running your mouth, you know, I'm sure head coach Sean McCauley is not going to be too pleased with that. We take a look at the injury report for uh, these two teams presented by Campbell Clinic, and uh, well, nothing to really report. Everybody's good. That's nice. I like to hear that. That's always good. Always good when you have the injury report is just, eh, well, everybody's feeling pretty good today. That is a free kick going the way of 901 FC as Cariaga wondering why the referee didn't play advantage there, but he chose not to, pulled it back. There was a jersey tug. Oftentimes that will be an automatic yellow card, but in this case it was not. Nonetheless, the ball will be pulled all the way back in a free kick. And you see... Keem Ward is kind of wondering, why is the ball going all the way back there? That's a fair question to me as well. So, a couple of perhaps puzzling decisions from the official. Maybe that's perked things up a little bit as each of these teams still trying to find some rhythm as it is early. Now, you can hear that rhythm of uh, Bluff City Mafia going to town as they always do. Love to hear that drum beat throughout the match. Tyler Derrick takes the free kick long, headed out of play by former 901 FC member Cam Lindley, who has flourished with Indy 11. Also, Elliot Collier on the bench as well, another former 901 FC player. He's on the bench today for Indy 11. Tulu cuts it off physical duel but very tidy back to Derek plays it across his box and Jimenez not for the first time today with a little bit of a sloppy play is something you, you hate to see a, a giveaway that cheaply into your final third you typically don't see that from Oscar Jimenez he's the veteran right back for 901 FC coming over from the from Louisville City he's got championship pedigree is look Looks like that was an offside call, Peter. But you can see the Indy 11 electing to, to go with a pretty high press up the field, which caused that turnover by Oscar Jimenez. We'll see how long they keep up that high press. Well, you know, high press is certainly effective, and we've seen more and more of it throughout the, the world of soccer. Teams using that press and counter press to try to establish control and to make it difficult for their opponents to, to do much of anything. Night Pickering whistle for a foul there. The problem, J.J., comes with just it's, a, it's an energy-sapping situation. You can only do it unless you've got guys that are just extremely fit. And yeah. we're early in the season. Guys are not quite up to full match fitness yet. It's hard to do that for 90 minutes. You can do it for, you know, 45. You can do it for 60 maybe. But as the game wears on, all of a sudden, that energy starts to dip. You're exactly right. As the game wears on, the energy starts to dip. And as the season wears on, we're also in, in, in March, right? As This is a summer league. You know, as we get into June, July, August, there's going to be uh, the pace will slow down dramatically um, and, and the game will change. But for now, you know, we can enjoy it. Good header in the box, cross, back, kind of a back flick. And that is wide of the target. Very creative attempt from Sebastian Gonzati, but... He is going to get a corner out of it as it looked like that was deflected off of Tulu. It's a good defensive Not play. Not a though. bad attempt there. Pretty yeah. clever to try that back heel. Very clever. That was on goal if Tulu wasn't there. It looked like Tyler Derrick might have been there too, but stranger things have happened where these those goals can squeak into the near post. Eden Stanley to take the first corner of the match for Indy 11. Left-footed in-swinger into the six. Handled well. Derrick, that's what you want from your keeper confidently taken and then cleared down the field into space Luis Fernando running onto it has a little bit of room good ball to the driving night Pickering who had that ball taken away from him a good bit of defensive play Tyler Gibson able to clear that but 901 FC maintaining control of the ball and now that ball cleared right into Akeem Ward and they're going to call a handball there and again I just don't you know, that, there's not much there, J.J. That's one that 
you know, I don't know. The ball, the ball, you, you, when, you're, when your hand's in a normal position and the ball gets kicked into your hand, that, to me, that's that's not really a hand. It, it, it's tough because you're exactly right. I mean, Akeem Ward had no control over where that ball was kicked, but I, I guess, you know, there was an advantage uh, that was had by that handball because the Indy 11 player, of course, was trying right. to clear the box and it happened to stay with Akeem Ward. So I, I understand it, but it is harsh. And that is one that Yannick Ertl will want to have back. Bit of a shank on the free kick. It'll lead to an immediate throw by Akeem Ward. And again, Sergei Demanchuk very particular about where these throws and free kicks are taken as he makes Akeem Ward take two steps back. <laughs> He's a man of order. He is keeping it law and order, baby. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Luis Fernando takes it. He's back to goal and controls it well. Fernando, that ball taken away. Played back by Augie Williams and now into some space. That's a very optimistic long ball and uh, far too optimistic uh, for Douglas Martinez, who would have had to be Usain Bolt to get that one, and uh, he does not appear to be Usain Bolt. Out no. of play for a goal kick. Yeah, Peter, as we look at you know these first 15 minutes so far, I think it's clear that 901 FC, they seem to be the more skilled, more poised team on the ball, but they're having a difficult time breaking down this high press from Indy 11, as you can see the foul there. Jimenez again coming in late, and he's going to be given a yellow card for that. Some of these passes, and these square passes, JJ, are a little bit lackadaisical. There's not, they're not the oomph that you have to have. When you have the teams that are pressing like that, you've got to be really quick with your movement. And 901 FC right now caught a little bit behind that pass. That was, you know, I, I would say for Jimenez, I don't, I think that's a little bit of a harsh yellow card because I, I don't know that he completely got the foot there. But he didn't have a lot to do because the ball was kind of underplayed to him. Yeah, he was putting a really poor position right there uh, on, the, on that pass. As you said, it was a little bit lackadaisical. And now Indy 11 are in, in a fantastic position with Cam Lindley. He's a set-piece specialist standing over the ball. Looks like it'll be an in-swinger here. He's going to probably land it right on top of the six-yard box. You can see there's just a ton of bodies inside the 18-yard box. Yeah, five in there to aim for for Indy 11. Lindley plays that one, and that is not his best effort. Ball cleared up by Heinemann, but not completely out of play, and then that's going to be called actually offside, which considering that ball was cleared by Heinemann, I'm not sure how they got an offside call on yeah. that one. But yeah, it must have been a player that... Must have snuck in from behind the back line there, but a really, really a wasted opportunity, Peter. Uh, Cam Lindley, typically we see him whipping a better ball than that, but it was a very flat ball. Yeah. Uh, didn't get enough of height or dip on it. Yeah, it was a pretty easy one for Heinemann to get ahead to it. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. And you see with that free kick now, 901 FC has had more success just kind of going along with it rather than trying to play into that that high line and trying to play out of that press sometimes you got to just go and they drew a foul and now they're in a decent position yeah exactly now you can put the ball down and play as you see them doing now i know uh, stephen glass and these players they always want to put the ball down and play but when a team is having that high of a press uh, inside your six yard box you know you get into kind of awkward situations like this one right here and tulu plays it and that ball was played with a little more velocity and the key was able to to handle it but again that ball cleared out and this is exactly the point of the press to get a turnover and get that ball into the hands of the opposition also jj talk to me about when you're being pressed like this how important is it for that first touch to be perfect oh it's, it's absolutely vital if you have a poor first touch and you're trying to play out of the back it can very easily end up being a shot on goal and, and or a goal uh, for the other team so you know, you really need your midfielders, uh, you know, Emerson Heinemann, Zach Duncan, showing for the ball and being confident and calm on the ball. Ball played up. A little bit dangerous there, but cleared away, at least for now, from Indy, but back to 901 FC and a nice kind of out ball there from Lapa. It finds Ward. Ward trying to go to the, the byline, chips it into a dangerous position. That ball is high and... Lapa turns around, and that one is real high and into the Bluff City Mafia for a goal kick. Good run of play from 901 FC. Unfortunately, couldn't find the business end of that move. Yeah, a bit ambitious there from Bruno Lapa. He's capable of the spectacular, but that would have had to have been really spectacular at the corner of the six-yard box, fading away from goal. But great play there from 901 FC. Really impressive from Akeem Ward. 
you know, he's always so strong on the defensive end, but we see him getting forward up and down the pitch for 90 straight minutes. Really great ball that he chipped into the back post. Unfortunately, uh, Bruno Lapo was just a little bit late getting there. Yeah, the service was perfect. He drives really hard toward that in line and is able to beat his man and then put a really quality ball in. That's all you can ask for from your left back in that forward position. Fernando playing a little overlap. Yeah, that's going to be out of play for another corner kick. Terrific work along that overlap and finding some opportunities there. Jimenez working well with Luis Fernando. It'll be the second corner of the match for Memphis 901 FC. This time coming in from the right side of the pitch. This will be a outswinger. You mentioned the size. It is tough to go straight into the box. And that's why right there. First guy right there at the edge. Aiden Stanley clears it away. And now good tackle. And the tackle that went off of the Indy 11 player and stayed in play. They're now giving themselves in a little bit of trouble here. 901 FC and like Tyler Derrick taking the path of least resistance, sensing that there was a little danger on, plays it long, and now once again, because of a couple of nice bounces, plays into the hands of 901 FC. Bruno Lapa taking it out to that left side. That's where you've seen 901 FC with their attacks. Good ball in, headed away by Callum Chapman Page, but it's back in a quick strike. Not a whole lot there. Zach Duncan couldn't get his foot fully through it. You saw the idea, and it was a good idea, but positioning was a little wrong, and able couldn't get that body shape right. Peter, you mentioned 901 FC. They're trying to play out of the back, but with the high press from Indy 11, it's hard to do so. They end up just lumping it down the field, but they've happened to get in some good positions. You can see here the ball kind of bounced around a little bit, and Zach Duncan kind of snatches at it, and uh, unfortunately for 901 FC, he couldn't quite wrap his foot around that ball. Well, you know, at, that, at this point, you know, J.J., is this you know, where Stephen Glass is kind of – telling the guys, hey, you, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to play it out of the back. It's great defensive effort there from the Ward. Ward. is having a nice game uh, for sure, but unable to quite clear it out. No whistle. We wanted that whistle. Didn't get it. Josh O'Brien kind of stopped playing for Indian. Now a break on for 901 FC. Played out wide. Knight Pickering. Two touches with that left foot. Blocked. But right back at it. Jimenez, good ball in, but it's taken well from Yanni Girdle. Aggressive goalkeeping. And he wants to get on with it and does so quickly. Play back out to Stanley and Stanley up to Augie Williams. Williams being pressured all the way up high by Toulouse. Way out of, out of the normal spot you would expect, but he's following his man all the way up the pitch. A little too aggressive. That'll be a whistle and a foul. We're in the 22nd minute, no score. What do you think so far, JJ? Yeah, really cagey match so far. The middle of the field is really clogged up. 901 have seen, have seen quite a bit of joy uh, working the outside of the pitch, right, with the two outside backs, Akeem Ward and Oscar Jimenez, getting up and down the, the sidelines of the pitch. So I think 901 FC, they might they might could find something there. Uh, it's going to be hard to whip in those balls, those aerial uh, threats, as the Indy 11 back line is, is really tall, really strong in the air. So I think if 901 FC can put the ball down, maybe cut the ball across the six-yard box, you know, we could, we could find a goal. Tulu head that, heads that ball away. Aiden Stanley to take the throw. Looks like he's setting up for a long throw here, potentially. Going to put this in the box. These are always a little bit tricky to deal with. All the way into the box, and that's like Tyler Derrick, really aggressive. That's what you want to see out of your goalkeeper. Playing it all the way up, looking for Knight Pickering. One-on-one, -on -one, Knight Pickering with Barbier, and Pickering will win that battle. Bring the ball down. Good ball into a just cutting Bruno Lapa, cutting across the top corner of the 18-yard box. Couldn't bring it under control. Good idea. Lapa's had a couple of iffy touches, but you can see he's getting into these positions, and you get the sense that both these teams are kind of starting to work each other out now. You're kind of starting to feel here's some areas where we could see some joy. You've seen 901 FC attack with Akeem Ward down the left side. You've seen some interplay with Fernando, Jimenez, Lapa over on the right side. There's some there's some some green shoots starting to emerge for what we've seen so far. Absolutely. The game has gotten more direct. Really, Peter, I think both teams have kind of seen that 
it's going to be hard to play out of the back, you know, with the high press. You know, what's the risk versus reward? You can try to play out of the back. Uh, but, you know, if you make a mistake, it could end up in the back of your own net very quickly. Whereas if you just kind of go root one football, get the ball on the other side, on, on the other end of the pitch, you know, then you can make some things happen. It's not, it's not always elegant, but it, uh, it does work very well. Ball played up. Looking for Augie Williams. Couldn't bring him under control. A bit high. It'll be a throw to 901 FC. Still scoreless in this matchup. 901 FC, a winner last week against Las Vegas Lights. 2-1 went down in that match at about this point in time in the, in the first half. Las Vegas scoring the first goal, but then two goals before halftime put 901 FC back in business. That second one scored by Knight Pickering, the USL Championship goal of the week, a terrific goal. And uh, in 901 FC was more or less in control for the remainder of the match. We mentioned last week it was a 2-1 loss for Indy 11 at Oakland, but a match in which they were really... I would say not only the better side, but far and away the better side, and yet somehow came out uh, completely empty. Now, great first touch there, and an opportunity in the box. Tulu, the tackle, it's going to be a yellow card and a penalty to Indy 11. Tulu, a very risky tackle. He had to get right on Jack Blake. Jimenez, JJ. Took a chance to try to cut that pass off and missed on that opportunity. Blake with a good touch, and there was the opportunity. You saw Blake get to the ball first. Now, did he really make contact with Blake? Hard to say. Pretty dangerous tackle. Though. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. You explained it perfectly. I don't know how much of his foot he actually caught uh, on Jack Blake, but like you said, he was kind of going in two feet, kind of a reckless tackle. He was put in a poor position. Tulu was by Oscar Jimenez, who's really struggled in the first 25 minutes of this match and we'll see if Tyler Derrick can come up with something special. Blake boy there's nothing you can do to stop that one what a strike 1-0 Indy 11 shades of last week for both teams Blake scored the first goal last week for Indy 11 and of course against 901 FC they gave up the first goal last week and around this time to Las Vegas Lights that was basically a flawless penalty, J.J. There's really nothing Tyler Derrick or anyone else, Tim Howard, you name it. <laughs> no one stopping one into the upper left corner like that. That was top shelf, Peter. You said it. I mean, Tyler Derrick even guessed right, right? He went he went to his right and he went high. But Jack Blake just rifled it right over the top of him. He just roofs this ball. Just absolute ruthless That's, penalty. That is, that is as good as it gets when it comes to a penalty right there. I mean, you could you – could, you can tell the goalkeeper, I'm going to put it right, and you still can't stop it. That is, is good. If you have the, let's say, <clears throat> courage to uh, to strike a ball that hard and go for that upper and you can hit it, more power to you. 1-0 the score, Indy 11, just like that. I'm not going to say against the run of play because I think this, this game has been sort of even, but uh, certainly Indy 11 has not dominated the match by any stretch of the imagination. They go up 1-0. and Now, the response last week was very quick from 901 FC and very uh, very strong. Steven Glass talked about it in the post game. Let's we'll see if they can do it again. Left footed cross into a dangerous position but headed away. Carriaga put it in a good spot but that was well cleared by Stanley. And that group Stanley, Barbier, Chapman, Page, they're all really doing a good job of clearing out any aerial attacks. Now Luis Fernando, great first touch. Cannot bring the ball fully under control. Would have been a spectacular strike, and he almost made it work. Had left foot, dragged that ball down, and in one touch made a turn. But once again, stepping in, making the play was Danny Barbier to block the shot. Yeah, Peter, I think it's just going to be really tough to serve in those aerial balls. As we see here, what a touch that was from Fernando. And great defensive effort as well from Indy 11 as he couldn't get the shot on goal. You see the opportunity is there. Now, JJ, this is, you see, not only FC so far getting into pretty dangerous positions, but those balls that are coming in in the air, having some difficulties with now. Here's an opportunity, and that ball is going to be out for a corner as it was deflected. Knight Pickering took a fortunate bounce, tried to cut it back into Luis Fernando, and he's going to earn the third corner of the match for Memphis 901 FC. But this corner is going to go kind of highlight what I was going to say. 
the, the service coming in, those crosses, with the aerial threat being nullified right now by Indy, do you have to kind of change the approach of, of how you're trying to get the ball into the box? Yeah, I think you really should. I mean, you can see the, the, the box is absolutely crowded with, with red jerseys with Indy 11 players, and they're all pretty big. So, uh, And you're not clearing the first man, as you see there. And that would have been one heck of, of, of a strike <laughs> right there from Duncan, who, I, you know, A-plus for ambition. Maybe not so much for execution, but that would have been a, the goal of the week for the second straight week from 901 FC if that had gone in. Yeah, so far they've not really been able to clear that first man. Even when they do, you're still seeing multiple really tall 6'2", six, 6'3", six, defenders who are able to clear the ball with, with their head. It's going to be something that you know, Stephen Glass and Caleb Sewell and uh, Leston Paul, who's now, of course, you know, not only playing, but part of the coaching setup as well. Going to have to kind of have a discussion about uh, what the best way to approach this is because right now it's not really seeing a lot of benefit. Yeah, Peter, I think you're absolutely right. You're going to have to go short, you know, put the ball on the ground and play instead of just lumping in balls into the 18-yard box. Jimenez, with a good touch, is able to clear the ball away, but up into a position that Callum Chapman Page handles well. Blake with a good touch. There's back to Blake. Blake crossing into the box. First time strike caught without too much difficulty from Tyler Derrick. Cam Lindley able to get his foot behind that one. Certainly got some pace on it. Didn't exactly get the positioning he wanted, but Indy 11 showing they are dangerous in these positions. And 901 FC now being asked a few questions early in this match. That ball played low from Ward. Tried to sneak it past. Chapman Page couldn't do it. But ball stays with 901 FC. Now Luis Fernando, a strike hits his own man. Knight Pickering, ball bounces around a little bit. Out of play, goal kick. Unfortunate there from Fernando, who got a good left-footed strike, but he hit Knight Pickering. Yeah, just a little bit off the execution is Peter for 901 FC. You can see Fernando and Knight Pickering trying to get on the same page in terms of who's making what run. I, I, I think they'll definitely clean that up as this match continues. Fertile to go long. Both teams kind of deciding that maybe it's best to just go ahead and play long and avoid trying to go against the other team's press. You do have to play a little cleaner soccer to be able to fight against that press. So far, it's been a bit of a struggle sometimes with both squads. You see Sean McCauley there, going to be pretty happy with the first 30 or so minutes for his team, up 1-0 on the road. 901 FC finding themselves in a similar position to last week, but they were able to overcome that without too much difficulty. Jack Blake, that's an unusually bad touch for him. That leads to a throw from 901 FC, but he tackles and gets it right back. And now back down that left side, Martinez. Finds Blake, Blake left-footed cross, deflected. Up and still under control of Indy 11, brought down. Now a lasered cross. That ball is headed away. 901 FC now with control. Lapa trying to start a break. Gets it out to Fernando in some space. Near sideline. Fernando looking for runners right now. Now he's got to do it himself. Left-footed little dink. And it is cleared out. No nonsense defending from Indy. They are not afraid to just clear that thing out of play if they have to. It's a really industrious side, Indy 11. You can see how quickly they all get back. Hardworking midfield with Tyler Gibson and Jack Blake. Cam Lindley as well, all hustling back on defense. And a little pressure forcing 901 FC all the way back across the back line. Von Stieg plays it up, and now they'll start again this time on the right side or on the left side rather plenty of space for Akeem Ward Ward instead of going to the byline now gets the pass does try to go to the byline cuts it back onto the right foot good cross into some space Pickering can't bring that ball down first touch was not what it needed to be that first touch for Pickering if he made that clean might have had a real good strike from about 10 yards out instead ball goes to Indy 11 Augie Williams controlling it now Indy 11 wanting to settle things down. And Luis Fernando with a foul, and that will be just fine with Indy 11 as they're trying to take a little of the sting out of things as 901 FC had a bit of momentum. That first touch mm, was right there. Knight Pickering yeah. couldn't bring it down. 
he, I think the first touch was actually really good. He just was a little bit indecisive. He had it on his left foot, and the Indy 11 defender knew that. I, I, I would really like to see Knight Pickering be selfish there, Peter, and just try a strike on goal. You never know. It could take a deflection and end up in the back of the net. Jack Blake is down for Indy 11. He's already had a busy match, scoring the goal from the penalty spot earlier on and drawing that penalty as well in the 26th minute down holding his left ankle as he's getting treatment here. A reminder that Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship in many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest Select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. We're seeing the key Ward having a discussion with Sergei Demanchuk about what's going on and Demanchuk explaining himself very well. It's 1-0. Indy 11 on top of 901 FC into the 34th minute. You see a few fans coming in all the way from Indy. Not an easy trip to make. So I always like to see in the USL Championship, there's so much growth. You see so much young talent. It's a, really a very much a league on the rise. And part of what makes it fun is, you know, you're starting to see some a lot of these away fans making the trip. You see some 901 FC fans making those trips down to, to Birmingham, making that trip over to Indy. Make, it's a Indy fans coming uh, to Memphis. I think it's great. It's fantastic. And you see the continuity of teams, right? These teams now have been around for three, four, five years where you can start to kind of create those regional rivalries and you can get the traveling fans. And these are two clubs that have also been committed to, to having a good on-the-field product, right? They've invested in bringing in really good players, really good coaches, and really good talent, uh, which, which is what the fans want to see. No question about it. So... Uh, as a result, you do, you do get some uh, some nice rivalries. As we said, it's been fairly one-sided uh, from uh, on Memphis' side over the last few matches, but uh, Indy trying to change that and getting a cross in. That was kind of a sneaky little cross. Didn't necessarily bear fruit, but there's something to consider. And now trying to play it yet again. Guinzati can't quite get there. It'll be a goal kick to Tyler Derrick and Memphis 901 FC. Now again, going to play it short. Nope. Says nope. <laughs> Thought about it, but not. Nah. Go ahead and get up there. It's funny to watch the match within the match to see. Now? Nope, nope. This is a, we, we, got a lot, we got a lot of little cat and mouse going with this. <laughs> with a cold kick. A little bit of gamesmanship. Like you said, the game within the game. Ball is headed away, and Indy 11 with the control. Williams dropping back in that striker roll. Now takes a nice pass. First time touch. Ball goes back to Lindley. Lindley for Indy 11. Still in the ball. Nice first time pass. Cleared away from 901 FC. Chapman Page being pressured by Knight Pickering. Good work by the 901 FC forward to force him all the way back to Ertl. Ertl plays it up long and without a lot of accuracy. And it goes back to 901 FC. Ball hops over Knight Pickering. A little bit of uh, pinball going on right now. Neither team able to establish too much control. Keem Ward went for it, didn't get there. That ball is not cleared out with a lot of authority from Derek. But he's able to get back between the sticks. Finally, the ball settles down a bit. Indy 11 with control. Passing it across that back line. O'Brien looking up. Now being played forward from Tyler Gibson driving. Jack Blake is back out there. Looks like he's going to be okay. Ball played up. Gibson in a dangerous position. Cuts it back. Williams first time strike. He is high and wide. Another really ambitious effort there from Augie Williams from the first time left-footed ball. See the good work from Tyler Gibson on the left-hand side of the bench. Pitch cuts it back to Augie Williams, who just a really ambitious effort with the left foot trying to whip that into the to the near post into the top corner. But Indy 11 starting to see a lot of joy in this game, Peter. But, uh, yeah, Tyler Derrick, I think, pretty well had that covered. But and you saw the passage of play is what will, I'm sure, concern Stephen Glass a little bit because Indy was able to establish control and you haven't necessarily seen 901 FC have some consistent control in this match. They've had some opportunities, but a lot of it has sort of come off of long balls and 
a, a couple of opportune bounces. Haven't really controlled the play the way that Stephen Glass typically likes to. And now Augie Williams whistled for a foul. He disagrees. Really, any 11, they put a lot of pressure on you and uh, force you to make mistakes. And I think defensively, 901 FC, not I think we, we know 901 FC has made a couple of mistakes, one of which costed him a goal, as we saw the, the penalty that Jack Blake buried earlier in this match. So 901 FC really will have to, I think there's going to be some adjustments made by Stephen Glass, maybe some uh, defensive substitutions. Uh, you know, Oscar, uh, Oscar Jimenez hasn't had his best match, you know, what we've seen him do in, in his past with Louisville City. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see some substitutions, maybe even at halftime, Peter. Yeah, it's some, certainly something to consider. Uh, on, on top of that as well, I, I think the tempo of play has favored Indy 11, too. They just seem to be playing with a little extra spring in their step right now. And 901 FC's not matched that clever little back heel. Now Blake, ball's going to be deflected out by Jimenez. Corner kick. I think you can see the difference in, in this team in the 11 versus Las Vegas Lights, who 901 FC played last week and also went down 1-0 to. This Indy 11 team has got a lot of experience, you know, in this league. They've got a, real, a lot of really strong players. When you look at Jack Blake and Gwenzati, Augustine Williams up front, uh, when you go down against a team like Indy 11, a lot of times it can be really hard to come back. Looking to extend their lead, Lindley. That cross, danger. And the whistle comes from Demanchuk. He spotted a foul in the six-yard box. It'll be a free kick to 901 FC. Ball was put in a dangerous area. You can see the difference in height. But again, that yeah, works in Indy's favor in both boxes when you're trying to attack those kind of crosses from corners. Derek. Putting that ball into the mixer. A little head tennis cleared up ball will eventually settle and it will be 901 FC and Emerson Heinemann takes it out so I'm taking over to Carriaga Carriaga drifting into the area that is going to be another pass that's just a bit short Gonzati dribbling away with it Good opportunity, Carriaga was smart play as looked like Fernando knew he was going to be offside and he drifted away from the play so he didn't get whistled there. But unfortunately, that cutback, not quite powerful enough and just haven't quite been on, on the mark with those passes. Now a dangerous opportunity, Carriaga 1v1 and cuts it back again. Now first time strike about... 15 feet too high. Once again, Zach Duncan. A little enthusiastic in that situation. The cutback from Carriaga. Again, you could see the idea, but just didn't have the personnel in place. So that's exactly what 901 FC needs to do. You, you're you're getting a lot of joy out wide, right? On the on the left and right hand side of the pitch, particularly on the left hand side of the pitch with Akeem Ward and cutting the ball back across the six yard box that's also what you want to do want to do right instead of lumping the ball in the air against this really tall Indy 11 back line just the execution has to be there right you got it you can't score if you don't put the ball on target just about half a yard short on some of these passes good tackle over there on the far side from Luis Fernando but now terrific job from O'Brien who puts a great ball in dangerous position and out of position is Tyler Derrick and it's goal number two it's goal number two for Indy 11. Douglas Martinez, fabulous work on that far side. Eden Stanley got that ball in, put in a dangerous cross. Derek came out and could not claim it. And it was a dangerous, dangerous position and an easy finish for Douglas Martinez. 2-0, Indy 11. Peter, for all the chances that Indy 11 missed last week at Oakland Roots, I tell you what, they're finishing pretty much everything in this match, including uh, goals that are pretty awkward, right? That's pretty uh, unorthodox, that goal there from Douglas Martinez. Is Tyler Derrick came out, and unfortunately for 901 FC, just completely missed the ball, and Douglas Martinez does a great job of sticking with it. Wonderful ball as well from Aiden Stanley, the left back for Indy 11, and as you said, Peter, they go up 2-0. 2-0, deserve to be up 2-0 with the way that they have played, and Stanley... That was a fabulous ball put into a really dangerous position. And Derek was kind of in between. But if you're going to come out, you got to get it. 
And you if got, you don't yeah. get it, then that's what happens right there. Yeah, uh -huh. typically you either got to get the ball or, ball or the man. So you know, which you either stay or yeah, it's, yeah, I mean one or the other, and or you stay on your line and you take your chances there. But uh, he, he, once again, just couldn't get there in time. And it was all about the ball, as you said, Peter, for Maiden Stanley, because it teased Tyler Derrick off his line, right? And that's what a good uh, in-swinging uh, ball will do from the outside of the field, or so, sorry, from the uh, outside of the pitch, from the flank there. And Tyler Derrick just caught, got caught in no man's land, and good goal from Douglas Martinez. Took out. You know, there was the bomb Stieg was kind of there, but the curl of it took him right out of the play. He had nothing he could do about that. And so now uh, Indy, Indy 11 up 2-0 and looking to add a third. That would really be tough for 901 FC, who's already got their backs very much up against the wall after this first half performance. Blake going back and forth with Stanley. The ball going out of play, and it's going to be another Indy 11 throw as... Indy 11 has gotten stronger and stronger as the half has gone on, and 901 FC has kind of faded with the pressure that Indy 11 is putting on. Stanley with a long throw over the top. Jimenez unable to get there, but also Gonzati unable to handle it, and that ball is going to go out for a goal kick. 901 FC is certainly looking shell-shocked right now by Indy 11. You just got to get to the half at this point. Absolutely. Indy 11 have come out in this match really strong. Not only see have also had some good chances offensively, but again, Indy 11 has, have stayed in their block of four, their block of eight with the midfield getting back as well, and not only FC find themselves 2-0 down. Now, perhaps an opportunity. Ball played just a little bit in front of Carriaga running through. I think Chapman Page pretty well had that covered, but you can see the idea at least. A pretty good one. You're going to have to play runners. You're going to have to play through balls. You're going to have to play in behind because I think the aerial game is advantage Indy 11 right now. Absolutely. I mean, not only have seen, have, have seen so much success getting the ball out wide and, and cutting the ball back across the box. I think if they keep doing that, they'll find success. But defensively, Peter, they got to be much cleaner. The fourth official has added a minimum of five minutes of added time. That is a lot of added time. And now we've got... A second yellow and a red card for Oscar Jimenez with a tackle right on the edge of the box. We mentioned it has been a bad game so far for Jimenez, and it's just gotten a whole lot worse. That was about the last thing 901 FC could handle. You'd almost prefer a third goal than losing a man at this point. Take a look. We were in a different shot, and there it is. No question about it. Pulls him down, and I think Tulu may have had that covered. But Jimenez, no question about it, just pulls Cam Lindley right down. Yeah, just a really Look unfortunate, that, yeah. Steven Glass just staring right past Oscar Jimenez as he walks, takes a very long walk around yeah. the pitch and into the locker room. I bet you Steven Glass, he's probably, he might even be kicking himself for not pulling Oscar Jimenez off before the half. Sometimes we see coaches do that, Peter, where if a guy doesn't look like he's ready to play, you know, he'll, they'll, they'll bring the player off even even before half, you know. And uh, I think certainly that could have been the case in this match. But I don't want to see have a long road ahead of him to come back from this game 2-0 down and down a man. Cam Lindley, another dangerous free kick. Plays that one far post just over the head of Callum Chapman Page. And out of play, goal kick. 901 FC, all the work to do now. Two goals down, one man down. That's not good. Yeah, you know, as a manager of a team, Stephen Glass, you don't really plan a lot for, you know, your halftime talk and your halftime tactics to be down two goals and down a man. There's not really a lot you can do. You know, you might, you know, do you do you bring a defender off and maybe go three five two? Uh, add more into the attack, but at the same time, if you attack too much, and leave your got, defense. But it's, but it's, yeah. it's two, it's you know two five two at that e point. Exactly. You're missing, yeah. Or, or it's, three four two, or you know you're you're missing that one man at exactly. that point. So you have to really either take a big risk and you know leave yourself open on counterattacks, which you know India has shown that they are very yeah. capable of taking taking advantage of that. Or you know you can do damage limitation and just kind of say, okay, well. Let's hold it at two and, and, and take our lumps and, and, and see what happens. It's, yeah. you know, you have to kind of make that determination. How, how aggressive do you want to be to try to get back into a match in which you're two goals down and a man down? Well, it's, we know it's going to be very hard at this point to get three points, right? It's going to yeah. be hard to even get a point out of this match. But 
maybe if you can get a goal before half or an early goal in the second half and then uh, hope for the best, maybe get a late goal in the second half and tie this thing up, you know, maybe that would be best-case scenario. Beautiful long ball from Fernando. Akeem Ward cuts it back. Dangerous position. Now Duncan again trying to get his feet settled. Ward to the byline. 1v1 against Lindley. Good cut back edge of the area. Hindman takes a strike well wide. Looking those speculative efforts from 20 yards out or so. Not bad. That one okay, but going to need to probably do a little bit more testing the keeper if you're going to put those things near the target. You at least want to force a save, force a deflection, something. Exactly, and that's been 901 FC's main issue, right, in this half offensively. They haven't they haven't managed to hit the target. If you don't hit the target, you can't score. I'll say it time and time again, and on that particular shot in Emerson, Hyman going near post, maybe maybe open your body, go far post, but either way, as you said it, Peter, at least just hit the target. Ertl going uh, long there and a little too long out of play. Throw in 901 FC. Memphis 901 FC playing a man down after the Red card to right back Oscar Jimenez. Got his second yellow in the 46th minute of play. Now 901 FC and Fernando couldn't bring that under control, but Carriaga is going to pick up the scraps. Hakeem Ward, another cut back into position. Knight Pickering, deflected ball. Didn't have a lot on that strike. Those cutbacks have been there, though, J.J., and that might be an area that you want to explore a little more in half number two. The cutbacks and those opportunities, they're there. Well, Nerva, it seems like at this point it's almost a tactic of Indy 11 to leave the flanks open, but they're doing such a good job defensively defending the cutbacks. At least 901 FC, they're getting shots off. As we see a push in the back there from Aiden Stanley. But in the 11, time and time again, they've been so impressive defensively, not allowing hardly any shots on the goal for 901 FC. Played out wide, not much time left in half number one. If 901 FC is going to get anything, it's going to have to come very, very quickly. Tulu playing it out wide. Lapa, maybe time for one more attack. Lapa playing the ball long, handled there by Heinemann. Ball deflected, Fernando. Back out to Heinemann. Heinemann to Ward. Ward shipping it into position. Great ball. Ball is deflected once, still in play, and gathered up by Ertl. Ball had some backspin on it, and it really took everyone by surprise. Dangerous position. Heinemann couldn't quite bring it under control, and the goalkeeper, Yarnick Ertl, will be happy to grab that one. You see, Heinemann just couldn't quite figure out where that spin was, but the backspin on it took everyone by surprise. You'd never expect that thing to bounce. Yeah, not only FC just hasn't, as we see the half here, they haven't had the poise in front of goal or in the final third. And that does bring half number one to a close, and it's not a half that Stephen Glass is going to want to uh, remember long into the memory. This one uh, started a little rough and just got worse for 901 FC. Down two goals to nil and also one man down with a red car to Oscar Jimenez. A lot of work for 901 FC to do in half number two. We'll see what they can do. We'll give you some stats. We'll take a look around the USL. We'll find out more about the cancer kickers and a whole lot more at the half. It's all in the 11, 2-0.
Welcome back. Halftime here. Indy 11 leading 2-0 over Memphis 901 FC. Of course, Memphis 901 FC unveiling their new home kits with that front jersey sponsor, the Cancer Kickers Soccer Club, a charity providing support to cancer patients under the age of 18 with the gift of soccer. Let's find out a little bit more about the Cancer Kickers. Memphis versus everyone. If you're from around here, it's in your DNA. It's that chip on your shoulder, an attitude that nothing can stop us when we band together. Now, it's time for that Memphian spirit to shine, as two iconic partners, born and raised right here in Memphis, join forces to showcase what we can do for everyone. Introducing the 2024 jersey partner from Memphis 901 FC, the Cancer Kickers Soccer Club. A third generation Memphian and business owner, Chris Clothier, established the Cancer Kickers in 2016. The mission? To provide comfort, community, and connections to children fighting cancer. Since then, the organization has shipped soccer kits to more than 2,500 children in all 50 states and 23 countries around the world. The gift of soccer is priceless. It changes lives and provides hope. That's what this partnership represents. The Cancer Kicker Soccer Club, together with Memphis 901 FC, a local partnership with a global impact. And with the backing of our supporters and soccer fans around the country, nothing can stop us. It is halftime at AutoZone Park on a beautiful Saturday, St. Patrick's Day weekend. Everybody having a little bit of fun, but maybe not in that Memphis 901 FC locker room right now. Is that a lot of fun? Uh, we'll see. In the 11 leading, two goals to nil. Let's take a look around the USL with some news and notes. And, of course, we start with Knight Pickering, who was selected to the, Mem the uh, U19 United States men's national team. Uh, he will be uh, heading to Morocco. In fact, right after this game, he's going to be heading to the airport and flying over to Rabat, Morocco. That's where two games will be played uh, later on this month against uh, England. Rhode Island FC joining the league, playing its first game today at home against New Mexico United after joining the league in December 2019. It's so nice 
for them to be able to play at home a Rhode Island FC. And of course, been some expansion around the league and more expansion. JJ USL Championship will welcome Brooklyn FC to the 20 in the 2025 season. And the club will debut this August in the USL Super League. So you're seeing that expansion continue. Absolutely. And it's just a testament to the league, right? Uh, USL Championship has done such a great job of developing clubs uh, around the country. And some clubs we've even seen go to MLS, right? And USL Championship will, will identify another market that is uh, really successful and, and with a really strong set fan base as we see here in Memphis, right? So, you know, kudos to uh, the USL and really excited to see Rhode Island FC kick off. Well, and you see the, 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 the standard of play around the league has really never been higher. And uh, that is uh, it's just really borne out by some of these matchups that we're seeing, including Louisville City, uh, a winner over El Paso Locomotive 1-0. And, of course, we are seeing this one 2-0 to Indy 11 at the half. Loudon and North Carolina tied at one uh, at the half. And, of course, uh, Rhode Island FC, we mentioned that one, their home uh, opener first time uh, in a long time. They take on New Mexico United later on today. Miami FC against Sacramento Republic, Pittsburgh Riverhounds in Orange County. In Tampa Bay, taking on San Antonio. That's a high-powered matchup, to say the least. Two teams that have been awfully successful and with some championship pedigree for sure. And, of course, 901 FC fans, you got to pay more attention to the Western side of things this year because uh, now the Western Conference foes uh, as the league has realigned. We'll come back with highlights and a look at some of the stats. Indy 11 leading the Memphis 901 FC 2-0. Back in a minute. Do get it, Doug. <laughs> When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. who you are or why you hurt but pain can be mastered if you know the way fight back with tiger balm's legendary herbal power trusted for over a hundred years our proven blend of camphor menthol and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living this is the way of the tiger for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. Just like real camping. Ugh, we don't have real ants. You know what? Like I said, real camping. When ants show up, so do we. Terminix it. A first half to forget for Memphis 901 FC. Down 2-0 and down a man as Indy 11 in complete control of this matchup. And we take a look at the highlights. And for Memphis 901 FC, kind of few and far between. A nice claim from Tyler Derrick. A decent opportunity here on the right foot from Emerson Heinemann. But from Indy's perspective, after that penalty, and here's the second goal headed in by Douglas Martinez. Penalty was unstoppable from Jack Blake, who scored for the second straight week after getting that penalty and uh, earning the penalty on Tulu. It was easy enough for him to finish 
with a very, very confident one. JJ, you talked about it. No shots on target for Memphis 901 FC. You cannot score a goal if you don't have a shot on target. Dominating possession, but again, look at that XG number, 1.8 to 0.2. Kind of tells you the, the entire story of this one. Indy has not necessarily had a ton of possession, JJ, but what they've had, they've really taken advantage of. Well, you can tell this Indy 11 team is a team, they're comfortable not having possession. They don't need to have possession uh, to execute their game plan, which is get the ball in the box uh, in, in the opponent's final third as fast as possible, uh, get your get your players in good positions like Jack Blake and Augustine Williams. These guys can score goals, and they can score goals in a hurry. Uh, they're, they're completely fine sitting back and letting 901 FC pass the ball east and west, and uh, not really do too much with it. So I think it's it's a, it's a fair scoreline so far, and really Indy 11 have, have 901 FC right where they want them. What would you do if you're, if you're Stephen Glass, you're facing this situation, you've got to come out and you, you've got to try to make something happen down a man and down two goals. I mean, it's certainly been done before. We've seen things like this happen in soccer. Uh, nothing's impossible, but it's not easy. What would you do? Well, it's a really tough position to be in. You know, you don't have a ton of options Options if you're Stephen Glass, but you don't need to go out gangbusters and try to get, you know, three goals in the first ten minutes of, of this of the second half, right? That's really un, unrealistic. I think you, you, stay, you stay solid, right? Still have good defensive shape. If you can nick a goal early on, that's great. Uh, continue to stay solid defensively and then try to get another goal uh, late to tie this thing up. You know, I think if you try to look at winning this match, scoring three goals, while not conceding any in the second half and trying to get three points, it's probably unrealistic, right? So I think if, if you're Stephen Glass, you got to, it's a, it's a, it's a tough game. You know, it's kind of a game of chicken, right? You want to try to score some goals, but you also have to be uh, solid defensively as well. And you see uh, the teams having their final discussion on the pitch, and there will be a couple of new faces uh, for Memphis 901 FC as the checking into the match will be Lucas Turchi number eight providing a little size and Marlon Santos number 11 is going to be uh, checking in as well. Turchi is going to come in and what, it looks like it's going to be a back three as you mentioned. The kind of something to consider for 901 FC. They'll line up in, in, a, in a back three. You'll see Akeem Ward is shifting over to the right side from the left side. They'll go with probably kind of a 3-4-2 because of uh, the nature of you know, how things have gone. So a couple of substitutions for 901 FC as we begin half number two. Thanks so much for joining us, Peter Edmiston, J.J. Greer with you. A harmless ball claimed by Tyler Derrick. We'll see how this tactical reshuffle, what can happen for 901 FC. Turchi could certainly provide uh, some size to counteract the height that you see from Indy 11. Also, Good touch and a good ball. And what a nice first touch. Great pass. Marlon Santos into a dangerous area. Tough ball there. Really good cross. No one making that far post run. That ball was begging to be put into the back of the net. Well, great great ball from Lucas Turchi to spring Marlon Santos forward. But it was kind of a, a weird opportunity there for 901 FC. It was, uh, it, it, it was kind of a... A cross between a, a shot and a cross, right? I think that was the confusion there, why Knight Pickering didn't quite make that, that near post run. Well, you know, and it was, you know, one on, on four, really. But you, know, you make an aggressive run, you see what happens. It was a good ball. I agree with you. Maybe kind of a in between a shot and a cross. Now Pickering, a couple of good touches, brings that ball under control. But just that quickly, the ball is taken right back. 901 FC trying to make a little name for themselves in the beginning of this second half trying to come out with the bit between their teeth ball chipped up to no one in particular for Indy 11 and all the pressure now on 901 FC to perform played across the back Turchi played into space Knight Pickering good effort to get his head to that ball and at least try to play it on to Bruno Lapa that ball is going to be deflected off of Santos. Santos said it deflected again off O'Brien, but referee did not agree with that. It'll be a throw to Indy 11, just underway in half number two as the USL kickoff presented by Terminix goes on. Ooh, some disagreement there as uh, Gonzati down. As you saw, Turchi 
you know, that's that communication thing just coming in to Derek. Derek was going to come out to claim it. Turchi didn't get the shout. A little bit of trouble. Now, Gonzati looks like he gets, oh, kind of caught on the way down. Looked like Tulu totally accidental. Didn't necessarily see what was going on, but he looks to be in a lot of pain, Gonzati. It's tough to see on that replay he there. He fell on his calf or something. He fell on the back of his leg. Well, as he was coming down from the jump, he landed on his, looks like he's getting his left ankle slash knee getting looked at right now. When looks like it buckled as he went down and maybe Tulu also might have landed on his he, leg. Yeah, I think he fell kind of on top of him a little bit. Again, I don't think there was anything to it, but nonetheless, it was a little bit troubling. Gonzati is still down. Slow to get up and see if we can take a look what happened here. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He came down with the studs into the back of his calf and the back of his ankle. Inadvertently, didn't mean to at all, but that's that's a very painful one for Gonzati. The, the, the good news is that maybe if you, you kind of patch it up and get through the pain, might not be any long-term effect but that's yeah, it's one of those buddy, more that's a of painful an, one right there. yeah it's a painful one it's one it's more of it's an impact injury right as opposed to a non-contact injury where you mm -hmm. twist a knee or an ankle and walking a little bit gingerly right now but he looks to be okay looks like he's going to return to this match well, i think he's he's won a foul but there's really i mean again this is more of a drop ball situation but um it looks like that foul has been awarded oh, okay. that's just kind of a looked like more of a sort of a coming together of players rather than any kind of a, a foul situation there. But free kick taken, taken short. One touch, too many. And that ball's going to go out of play. It'll be a well, it's to be a corner. The first thought it was going to be a goal kick, but no, deflected off a 901 FC player. In the opinion of Sergey Demanchuk, it'll be another indie corner. Ball was put into a position. Josh O'Brien kind of just playing it. Didn't have a lot necessarily, a lot of ideas of what he's going to do with it, but you know, you end up getting a cheap corner out of it. Yeah, Guinzotti is back onto the pitch, by the way. He's walking a little bit gingerly, but he's right back in the middle of the action. Goes right up to Tyler Derrick to try to screen. And you see, they're trying to screen out Tyler Derrick. Headed away, and there's what Turchi does. Got that size, a swing and a miss from Cam Lindley. And now the break could be on here. Marlon Santos plays a good ball tonight. Pickering, Pickering with the chance. Left foot chips it beautifully. Headed across. Carriaga way too high. Great decision by Knight Pickering. Playing it back across the middle. And Carriaga had maybe more time than he thought. Trying to loop a header back over the keeper's head, but he looped it over everything instead. It's a beautiful ball from Knight Pickering. Chipped it over to the back post to Carriaga, and as you mentioned, Peter, it looked like he couldn't quite get his forehead over the top of that ball. I, I don't know if he was trying to kind of chip it over as you saw the counterattack there from 901 FC. Really speedy counterattack. Beautiful ball from Knight Pickering, and looked like Carriaga was trying to gently place that ball into the back post, but just couldn't quite get it right. Yeah, this, the timing was all wrong on that one, but you saw the idea, and it was a good idea. Now this ball is cleared away there at Vom Stieg to Marlon Santos, who's had a really nice start to the match. And uh, that's going to be a foul. And mm, I don't know. I wouldn't, that looked like you could have seen a card there. Either way, it is going to be a foul. Take a quickly free kick. I think the two subs are already making their impact, Turchi and, and, uh, and Marlon Santos. Both have... have have already had some nice touches just five or so minutes into half number two. Oh, they've been fantastic so far. Marlon Santos has been very active uh, offensive and, offensively and defensively, and Lucas Turchi as well. Ball cleared away. No foul. Just out of the reach of Bruno Lapa. Instead, it'll go to Barbier, and Barbier playing himself into a little trouble there. Has to just play it up aimlessly. Vom Stieg, the header from Memphis 901 FC. One on one battle with Akeem Ward fighting with Tyler Gibson. Referee letting him go a little bit. Gibson just able to win out. Ball taken up. Callum Chapman Page plays it to Williams, who draws 
the foul and the free kick Von Stieg a judge to have pulled Augie Williams been really impressed played with Augie really, Williams hold up play so far yes indeed played very long Douglas Martinez back into the area Von Stieg goodness gracious cleared that ball it's going to be a corner that thing <laughs> it wasn't that far away from a, from a strike on goal <laughs> That thing was very close to going to the top Goodness corner. gracious. I think Von Stieg must not have realized yet. He had a lot more time and opportunity than that. He didn't did not need to just wildly clear it. Well, it's always that's what happens, you know, when in the 11, when the, when the opposition puts you in a tough situation right in front of your own goal, you're trying to sprint back, but also get your body turned so you can clear the ball. A lot of things can go wrong. And fortunately for Carson Von Stieg, nothing went wrong there. Corner. Header by Martinez, still in Indy 11 control. Blake looking for a cross. He's double teamed, gets it in, headed away very well. Marlon Santos, another good touch. Bob Stieg brings it down out wide, and Carriaga cannot bring it under control. Throw to Indy 11. I don't think Marlon Santos has put a foot wrong since joining this match. He's been terrific in the first 10 minutes since he's arrived and has injected a little spark in Denino 1 FC's attack. I know he's definitely sitting a little bit deeper than what we typically see him. We typically see him as a left winger, but he's putting in a, a defensive shift right now while also managing to get forward. Well, because when you're a man down, everybody's got to play a kind of a roll and a half, and that's what he's doing out there. Played into space, Knight Pickering trying to stretch those legs a little bit past Callum Chapman Page, can't do it. But he does force at least a throw as Chapman Page cannot control it. Keem Ward... Working quickly. Back to Tulu. Tulu to Turchi. Turchi plays it forward for Lapa. Lapa a little further forward in the attack now in this reshuffled tactical lineup. Santos drawing the foul. Now we've got a player down for Indy 11. You're seeing the discussion with Sergei Demanchuk. Not a lot of sympathy there from the <laughs> official. <laughs> we saw early on that he was not going for any foolishness in this match when he first gave that yellow card, I believe it was in the fifth minute, to, to Callum Chapman yeah, Page. Yeah, just said, hey, shut up. <laughs> See, uh, Sergei Demanchuk. Our referee, Mike Nickerson, Jackson Klaus are the assistants on either side of the field. And Wes Coquette is the fourth official today in this matchup. If you can't watch the match, turn on Sirius XM FC 157. North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus, hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Free kick to be taken. Carriaga lofts it into the box. It was headed more kind of by the face of Turchi. Turchi trying to recover back. Not at 1FC with the ball. Santos plays it up. That ball is going to go out of play. Throw to 901 FC. Zach Duncan. Peter, I think this is not a bad start at all from 901 FC. Yes, they've had to absorb pressure, but you know that's going to happen when you're down a man and you're down two goals, right? You're going to have to absorb pressure, and uh, maybe 901 FC has been a little bit fortunate not to have conceded so far, but also they're managing to get chances. They you are. know, they're being aggressive uh, in, on the other side of the pitch. Duncan whistled for the foul, and everyone caught off guard by Indy 11's desire to play quickly, including some players on Indy 11's team weren't ready for that one. Marlon Santos with the ball. Playing it back and caught a real rough tackle from Douglas Martinez. Very foolish tackle that, from Douglas no, Martinez. No need for that at Marlon all. Marlon Santos was passing the ball backwards. Yeah. You know, and Douglas Martinez, you know. Fairly uh, harmless one, but Martinez yeah. will get in the book for that one. Exactly. Sticking his arms out like, you know, what did that do? But it was quite obvious, you yeah, know. It was a heavy challenge for sure. So you see Douglas Martinez not really in a dangerous position at all, and then also passing the ball yeah. backwards and then. Martinez just sticks a leg in there. Followed through with that one and just yeah, no no need no need for that. Now free kick to be taken. 
got a little head to it there. Knight Pickering, will we call that a shot on target? <laughs> let's call that a shot on target. Kiriaga's ball headed harmlessly, but it, let's, they, we're looking for a shot on target, so let's, I think we'll, we'll, we'll give that a, the first shot on target. Well, we certainly Knight haven't Pickering. seen Yannick Ertl have to make any saves so no. far. He's had a pretty relaxing afternoon so far. Had that one little incident now. Here's a real dangerous opportunity from Williams, and he's going to be offside, and that is very fortunate that he was unable to hold his run a little bit further because he was in one on zero. Had he been able to hold that run just a little bit more, whistle for offside. Ertl had that one stretch late in the, in the first half when the Heinemann had him in a tough position, ball was chipped in with a little backspin from Carriaga, and Ertl didn't quite know what to do with it. Other than that, it's been a pretty easy afternoon for him in this beautiful mid 60s sunshine in Memphis, Tennessee. Derek plays it long, bouncing over the head of Knight Pickering, and look at Santos again, just showing the effort and forcing. A rough touch, two touches from Turchi, keeps it in play. And again, the two substitutes combining for some effective play right there. That's going to be a foul, but referee says we'll play the advantage. Bruno Lapa to Carriaga. Back to Lapa in the midfield. A little control from 901 FC. Down a man, but you wouldn't know it so far from the second half, the way they've played. Driving in is Ward. Carriaga goes over his foot, but Turchi's there to clean it up. All the way back to Tulu. You can see all 11, in the 11 players behind the ball in their own half. That ball played short again. We've seen that 901 FC a little too much today as short passes causing some problems. And now Indy with an opportunity to break if they want. Douglas Martinez trying to play a pass. Turchi can't do it. Lucas shuts the door, the Brazilian. Little one-two, tidy play. It's going to be deflected out of play and a corner kick upcoming. As you saw, Barbier trotting up from his center back spot, making a one-two with Blake. And again, asking some questions of that back line, the 901 FC and forcing another cheap corner. We've seen two or three cheap corners tonight. That's it's just a, it's a, it's a kind of a sign of a good team that you can you can you can generate corners even from positions that aren't necessarily the greatest. Well, it also happens when you're a man up, right? You can get a center back coming in and adding another person into the attack, right? There's nothing 901 FC can do about it because they're down a man. You're exactly right. Lindley Tula with a nice clearance there, and that ball is going to be <laughs> Jack Blake trying for the spectacular one. We've seen a couple guys try those. Spectacular volleys from outside the box. Looks like Jack Play kind of put his hand up, his hands up over his eyes, like the sun was in his face. But yeah. I'm sure that was the case. But it was the, yeah. <laughs> that was going to take a lot. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one there. Santos, again, a nice one-touch pass to Bruno Lapa. Santos along that sideline, back to Lapa. Lapa though, no one shouted, man on. Martinez goes down. Demanchuk says nothing, doing. Play on. Carson Bomb Stieg, but again, having to kind of play back, trying to cut through. And that's going to be a foul. Blake dragged back. Douglas Martinez has stayed down. Going to need some treatment. Have to look at that one again to see if he has a point about being tackled. I assume something must have happened. It looks. I think it's going down for just for nothing. Something tells me, Peter, he'll be back on the pitch. I think you're probably right. I, I'm optimistic for the young man's recovery. Hey, 42 red you see, right? He's gonna Let's see. He's gonna oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's that's legit. Lapa, Lapa, Lapa got him a little bit. I think he's I think he's going to be, be okay. Although I do think he's headed out. Uh, it looks like he's going to be subbed here. Yeah. Indeed, he is going to be subbed. Yeah, you will be back on the so pitch. May, so, yeah, not going to be back on the pitch at all. It'll be Hinderlong coming in to replace him. Kind of a like-for-like -like sub there from Indy 11. One forward for the other. Yeah. 
2-0 the score. You see Memphis 901 FC trying to find a way back into this match. Down two goals. And also a man down. They played a man down since the end of the first half when Oscar Jimenez with a reckless rash challenge picked up his second yellow card and really cost his team. He was also instrumental in the allowing the first goal. It was just not, not, not one of his better outings, I would say. I would imagine that's one that, that he, he's certainly going to want to have back. Turchi doing a nice job of riding that potential challenge from Hinderlong. It'll be a, another goal kick. It's been comfortable enough for 901 FC, JJ, but again, without really necessarily doing enough to test Indy 11, and that's hard when you're a man down, but it's what you got to do if you want to try to get back into a match down two goals. No, absolutely. At some point, you're going to have to really start throwing numbers forward. We're, we're past the hour mark now, as you see the foul there. We're past the hour mark now. Uh, you know, you only you have less than 30 minutes now to, to try to get two goals, so uh, you've done a good job at least not conceding. You've gotten a couple of chances, but you just don't really have enough numbers getting forward to really threaten the back line of Indy 11, so I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some substitutions, maybe some tactical changes as well from Stephen Glass to get more numbers forward. Well, and you could also, again, you could send you know a guy like Lucas Turchi forward who's very versatile to play just about anywhere on, on the pitch, so you don't even necessarily have to have a substitution in order to make a, a tactical change if you wanted to you know, give a little bit of a target man up front uh, for some of those long balls that are coming in. An think, errant pass right there. I think you're absolutely right. You know, a target forward, Lucas Turchi is a big body, but he's also got a thunderous left foot, left and right foot. You know, maybe get some substitutions as well. Knight Pickering, he's put in a shift tonight, but he's running all over the pitch. You know, Cariaga's played a great game as well, but, you know, these guys are also going to start to get pretty tired. You know, you're down a man, you're having to, to sprint all over the field. Indy happy to win the throw and slow the pace down. Indy played with a lot of force toward the end of the first half, and now a man up can play with a little less. If you want great ball into the area, really dangerous position. Santos shepherding it out of play, or at least out of the dangerous area in the box. Gets that ball to Lapa, but Lapa double-teamed, couldn't get it under control. Now Gonzati plays it back to Blake. Blake nutmegs his man, 1-2 on the edge of the area, but couldn't control it. Lapa now with the ball. Cariaga trying to find some runners. Akeem Ward is there, but maybe not necessarily making that run. And we just don't see a lot of runners, J.J., from this 901 FC team. They're not, not really running into those spaces right now. Sort of playing kind of a build-up type game from the back, but... I think they're, they're tired, Peter, to be honest, when you're having to defend so much, expend, you expend so much energy defending, right, and, and just possessing the ball. It's going to be really hard to throw numbers forward, and if it doesn't work out, then you got to sprint back, right, because you're, you're down a man. You can get caught on the counter. So, uh, you know, that's why I think, you know, substitutions are probably, they got to be coming soon for 901 FC. you got to get some fresh bodies out there to, to get more running, as you mentioned, Peter. Well, you got to pick your spots for sure. you got to pick your spots of when you can run and when you can't and when you can make those runs. It's just... And when you when you're you're trying to play sort of a build up uh, attack, it's hard when you're a man down. You really have to be accurate with your passing yeah. and your movement. It's it just it's a very very tight uh, you know, no margin for error in that situation at all. Ball goes up and good physical play from Tulu keeps Hender Long from it. It'll be a goal kick taken quickly from Tyler Derrick trying to up the pace just a little bit. I don't want FC. Down two goals and down a man. Played long from Turchi, a little too long, looking for that was a run from Akeem Ward, but again, that ball was well over the top of him. And now Indy. That ball not played with any kind of authority, and it's going to be given away. Knight Pickering ends up with it. Marlon Santos, Lapa working that far side. There's Santos. Ships the ball back into the middle. A little too much for Duncan. Indy with the ball. Plays it over to Williams. Williams done a really good job as a hold-up defender, or a hold-up forward, and adds a little extra shove to Vom Stieg. Away from the camera, you couldn't see it, but that's getting a little physical up front. 
but Williams is doing everything that you'd want a physical forward to do for Indy. Just really occupying two defenders and making their lives miserable. Ball given away, though, and a chance for 901 FC, potentially. Over to Santos. Santos, been a real bright spot in the second half. Cuts it in, right foot shot. Just a moment where it looked like maybe Ertl might bobble it a little bit, but he got it under control. Peter, I think that was the first le legitimate shot on goal that 90, 91 FC have had. And it comes in the 68th minute. You see Marlon Santos dips his shoulder, cuts inside on his right foot. That ball is knuckling a little bit too, unfortunately for 91 FC. It was right down the middle of the goal, but Ertl still had to make the save. No, and again, Santos showing a lot of dynamism and it's exactly what you need is you got to have somebody that's just, you know, going out there and willing to go up and make something happen. Now Knight Pickering dragged down in the box. Demanchuk says nothing there. Chapman Page. Very physical. We have to kind of see that one again. It really seemed totally unnecessary from Indy's perspective. It looked like that was one that Ertl could have come out and just sort of gathered, but left it there, and there was a coming together. You'd have to see it again. Shoulder to shoulder. I think it's fair. I, think yeah, I don't just... think there's a lot in that, honestly. Yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, you didn't see him. He wasn't grabbing the jersey. He wasn't yeah. pulling him down. I, I think that would have been pretty harsh. Yeah, that, that would have been very harsh. It looks like a... You know, 50-50 ball. Both players come in with the shoulder and fair call. Ertl really giving them a chance, though, by not jumping out and being a little more aggressive with that ball. It gave them the opportunity for that ball to bounce. You know, the rule of thumb is you don't really want to let the ball bounce in the box if you can help it because that's when bad things can happen. Bob Steeg plays it out with the right foot. Indy 11 still with control. Control of the match as well, up 2-0. Gonzati. Plays it out. O'Brien, cross, handled by Turchi. Now Santos. To Carriaga, back to Santos. Chips it wide. Ball is acrobatically handled from McKean Ward. One touch, and then up tonight, Pickering into that half space. He'll at least draw a throw. Hard-earned territorial victories for 901 FC to at least try to get the ball up the pitch and make something happen. That left side is where they've seen the most action in the second half between Lapa and particularly Marlon Santos, who's been very good. Lapa chipping it in, thought that Pickering was going to continue that run across the front of the box. He didn't, and instead it ends up being harmlessly chipped into Yannick Earl's hands. As you can see, even on the cross, looked like Bruno Lapa and Knight Pickering weren't on the same page. But at the same time, Peter, Knight Pickering was the only 901 FC player inside the 18-yard box. You're simply just not going to be able to come back if you only have one offensive player in the opposing team's box. No, and I think it's, it's kind of what we talked about, where Stephen Glass is sort of caught between a rock and a hard place. You know, if you if you push too many men forward, you're, you're really opening yourself up for a third or fourth or however many you could end up giving up. Or... On the other hand, you also are really asking guys to work extremely hard. It's early in the season, you know. Is it? It's not the greatest thing in the world not to win, but you know, if you you don't want to tire guys out, get them hurt, anything like that. So, and goal differential does matter. Yeah, Peter, goal in, differential in does matter. In, You're exactly in the table, right. So, Gonzaga's going to keep that in play and play it off Marlon Santos. Here come some more subs for Indy Eleven. Couple subs for Indy 11. It'll be Elliot Collier coming in, the former 901 FC player, as well as King coming in for 901 FC. It will be Abdullah Sissoko checking in along with Dylan Borzak. So Borzak coming in to provide some running for sure. Nico Brett as well coming in. So two forward players. And Sissoko coming in as a defensive player. I wonder if that's going to be to allow Turchi maybe to move forward or maybe somebody else to kind of you know, push up just a little bit. Uh, we shall see. But you know, Stephen Glass not giving up just yet, bringing on some attacking players to try to freshen things up, get some more players forward for 901 FC. Long throw into the box, glancing header from Santos. Ball eventually cleared away by Zach Duncan. First touch for 
Dylan Borzak. One two header there from Nico Brett. Played a good ball into the path of Borzak, but it is handled well. And Indy really been pretty much spot on defensively. They have not had a whole lot to do, but what they've done, they've done very, very well and have not allowed too many opportunities for 901 FC. That ball played up. Lucas Turchi heads it right to Santos. Santos looking for Dylan Borzak. Turchi now intercepts. Plays it out wide to Akeem Ward. Good ball, and Ward 1v1. Ward's going to try to play it forward, looking for the run of Nico Brett. Can't find him. Sissoko. Plays that ball over, looking for Santos, and Santos has a little room to work with here, and two in the box now. Ball is cut back, and it's going to be deflected and out of play. I think 901 FC, if they can keep finding Marlon Santos on the wing and getting him in good 1v1 positions, uh, that's probably going to be one of the main ways that you're able to score. For sure. For sure now. And Cariaga just kind of muscled off that ball, but a bad bad pass forward is deflected out of play. It will be a throw for Indy 11. And you've seen, uh, I think, a, a certainly an improved 901 FC in the second half. There's been a, an improved performance without necessarily really doing enough to threaten Indy 11. And, you know, you, you again have to bear in mind they're playing a man down. Uh, so that does affect everything you do out there. It's certainly very difficult to play that way. But, you know, that being said, you got to, in these last 15 minutes or so, you're going to have to really push everybody forward. Bob Stieg does a good job of bringing that down. Duncan plays it up. Cariaga out to... Dylan Borzak. Borzak tried to beat his man for pace, can't do it. And then he ends up tripping King in the box. Referee says that's fine, no worries. Play on, out of play. It'll be a throw to 901 FC. Into the 75th minute, still 2 0. Indy 11 in control of this matchup at AutoZone Park. Terrific job by the crew here. Grounds look great. Pitch looks great. Now Santos taken down. No call. King with kind of a shove to the back. Maybe Santos went down a little easy, but that one looked like more of a penalty than the uh, the one off the long ball with Knight Pickering involved. I think it was a good no call there. You saw Marlon Santos was trying to split the two defenders and Looked like he was able to do so. I would have loved to have seen him stay on his feet. You see him here, split it. Yeah, that's, you know, went down a little easy there. Yeah, that's not, that's not that's not what you want to do. Not a ton of contact there. Would have loved to have seen him stay on his feet and try to stick with it and get a shot on goal. Well, again, you know, Santos has been a breath of fresh air on that left side. He's really playing a dynamic brand of soccer that they need. They need somebody to make those runs and just. You know, but go go after guys one on one. We have not seen a lot of challenges from 901 FC to try to go after guys one v one. Akeem Ward's done it a couple times, but apart from that, really haven't seen guys want to you know stretch their legs out and, and then go after guys. And Santos is willing to do that. Ask a few questions and see. You know, maybe you get a penalty, maybe who knows? But you got to get your way back into the match somehow. They got to keep feeding him, and he's got to keep getting shots on goal. That's the, that's the main key. We've only got. Peter, I believe one shot on goal yep. for this entire match. It came from Marlon Santos. So. Depends on if you want to count that looping, that pickering <laughs> no, I, I'm, header as a shot. If you, I'm be generous, that. if you want to be generous, <laughs> you've, there, there have been two. Otherwise, there's just been the one. Indy 11. I think more than happy to, to let 901 FC have a little initiative. Kind of save their energy in the second half. Now with the ball into a, a tidy area. Sissoko, a terrific tackle. Right there, and that ball played up. Nico Brett, and I'm just not sure what the plan was there. There was nobody I, within 30 yards of that pass. Peter, I, I do think he was going for goal. I'm not sure if he's got that oh my. in his repertoire, if he's got yeah. that strong of a of, ah. a of a right foot, you know, judging off that effort, maybe not. But. I would say no. Uh, <laughs> that, that certainly did not look like it uh, at that point. He's, okay. All right. He's trying to think outside the box. Though, okay. Know. Hey, look. All right. We need new I ideas did. here. Give him credit for creativity, though, at that point. It's taking a 70-yard you know, strike is maybe not the way I would go, but that's the way it is right there. Great first touch. 
Now that ball into the area, Sissoko. Playing it, trying to play it out of defense, but eh, not playing it to anyone in particular is the problem there. Indy 11 back under control into the 78th minute of play. Lindley plays it over to Blake, chips it up, good ball. Dangerous opportunity. Played forward. Collier too high. Former 901 FC man trying to make it a dream return for him and a nightmare for his old fans, but that one was well high. Dangerous spot about 12 yards out. First touch was really good on the half turn. Second touch shot not so good, but I'll tell you what, Peter, I've been really impressed with the left back for Indy 11, Aiden Stanley number three time and time again we've seen him getting up and down the line he just has beautiful service with that left foot yeah it's been it's been consistently on on point time and time again you're exactly right it was his ball that caused all sorts of mayhem and led to that second goal it just took everyone completely out of the play for 901 fc now foul on collier free kick to 901 fc 79th minute of play if if you're going to do something, you got to go ahead and do something because you're running out of time for sure. Sissoko out wide to Vom Stieg, playing it down the line, and Borzak is well offside. Everyone just waiting for the official there. No one seems to like Sergei Demenchuk today. There's a lot of people just uh, disagreeing with some of the decisions that he's making or not making, as the case may be. Bors <laughs> Borzak's only been on the pitch for five minutes. He's already having a word to say. And we already learned, don't, don't be talking too much. Yeah, he's had a very stern approach to, to this efficient. match. A very stern approach. But i got to say, I think he's been pretty fair so far to both teams. He's had a, a pretty solid call so far. Yeah, I don't think I don't, I, I've, I've not had any major issues with, with what he's done for sure. Throw into Vom Stieg. Vom Stieg trying to want something a little long and plays to Borchek and the ball goes right back out. And, all right, try it again. If you're not at 1FC, JJ, anything to hang your hat on? Uh, I think what you can hang your hat on is just the effort, the work rate in the second half in particular. Uh, you know, it was a bad situation that you inherited in the second half, especially for some of these guys that have come on the pitch. But, you know, the work rate and, and uh, the spirit, I think, has been there. I think that's what you can hang your hat on in the second half. 1-2, Nico Brett to Santos. Santos trying to play a through ball in front. Good idea, but again, a little too much on that pass. He's asking an awful lot because you're playing through, you know, three defenders there in order to do that. Ball is down by Akeem Ward. Well, played up to Nico Bread. Now Vom Stieg into some quite a bit of space on that right side. He'll cross it in. Flicked header by Borsak. Well wide of the target. Good idea, but it's going to take something special if you're going to flick a header from 18 yards. You better put it right in the very perfect spot. Well, like you said, Peter, it's well wide of the target. You know, if, if you don't hit the target, you can't score. You know, and that's just been... That's been along with the poor defensive effort in the first half, the defensive mistakes in the first half, you still don't have any goals, right? You, you haven't hit the target enough. You've got, you had one shot so far on goal, maybe a, a couple shots if we count the looping header, night pickering header, but offensively it just has not been clean. Next up for 901 FC will be Sacramento Republic in two weeks time. So a little time to reflect. And uh, you know, that's one you probably, Santos trying a a little flick and run move there. This is one as a player, JJ. You probably want to play immediately after this one to get the taste out of your mouth, but you gotta gotta sit on it for a little while. Two weeks, next matchup. Collier, the ball is deflected right into Tyler Derrick's arms, a harmless shot in the end. Certainly one that you'll have time to look at and pick through. Gotta go on the road to take on a very tough Sacramento team, so it doesn't get any easier for 901 FC. Bob Stieg plays it short. Sissoko back to Derek. Derek square to Turchi. Ball played over. 
Cariaga finds Ward, and Ward now has to go all the way back. It's not as intense a press as we saw in the first half, but still there. Sissoko looping one over the top, looking for Nico Brett making the run. Brett with a thumbs up, but that's, again, that one's going to be very difficult to execute properly. You got to put it perfectly, and it wasn't quite perfect. It's the right idea, though, right? You got to find Nico Brett. He's a proven goal scorer in this league. He's a very quick player as well, as you as you said, Peter. It's going to take uh, a, a ton of skill. The degree of difficulty is very high, but that's the situation that you're in right now, down a man and down two goals. Keem Ward keeps Hendersong from it, and Hendersong goes down and stays down. Referees unconcerned, as are the rest of the players. Cariaga continues. Plays it out wide. Again, plenty of space. Borzak floating it out to Vom Stieg. Vom Stieg, pretty good cross. And another flicked header on Santos well wide. Looked like he might have deflected off of the Indy 11 player, but no, it's going to be given as a goal kick. It's a good, very good effort. Decent ball as well from Carson Vom Stieg on, on the left foot there, but it looked like Marlon Santos had a pretty clean look at the header, but Again, just I don't want to see not hitting the target. Yeah, yeah, the headers have been have been lacking a little bit in this uh, in this matchup so far. About to enter the 85th minute. Indy up two goals, still a man up. For those just joining us, 901 FC playing with 10 men due to the red card from uh, Oscar Jimenez earlier in this matchup, and now stays on his feet, and Derek comes out with some aggressive goalkeeping. That's going to be a foul given against Indy 11. Collier a little bit scrappy against Zach Duncan initially, and then Tyler Derrick comes out and does exactly what you'd want your keeper to do, go grab that ball. Took a little, took a couple shots in the process. You see right here, Collier kind of runs over, but then that's what Derrick should do and call that a little foul. Not much in it. Tyler Derrick, he's still bouncy, still very intense, a lot of fire, a lot of spirit, trying to spur his team on to at least try to get a goal and, and begin this comeback. Keem Ward into the tough, dangerous area. That Borsak coming in with a header. Now Nico Brett trying to clean it up, looking for an opportunity. Air kick, Borsak still there. Everyone fighting for the ball in the box. And finally, Indy 11 is able to clear that ball away for a throw dangerous position everyone fighting and scrapping for it try to make something happen just couldn't quite make contact good play there from 901 fc we got to give credit to indy 11 as well as we have a foul here you see sergey demanda Sergei splitting getting in between the two players as quick as possible as we have a big coming together between zach duncan and jack blake but peter as i was saying before you got to give credit to Indy 11. Their, the defensive work rate and effort has been just vital. Uh, amazing, really, at times. Last-ditch effort defending. It, it's played a big part in 9 fc really only having one true shot on goal. Now it's, it, it, nothing's come easy. Nothing's come easy for 9 fc in this match. That opportunity you know, didn't come easy. And they, they're really... They're fine with allowing crosses because they just feel very confident in their ability to deal with the ball in the air. And so far, they've been right. Borsak couldn't do anything with it. And now up to Collier. Collier heads it on, but goes right back. And now this is a dangerous break. If they can find that one touch, they couldn't do it. Williams was in. He was in with one good pass. But fortunately for 901 FC, that pass never came. Keem Ward, who seems still just as full of energy as ever, gets taken off the ball. Now three on two. And a chance to seal it. Great save by Derek, and the ball is cleared nearly off the line by Lucas Turchi. Williams had the goal at his mercy, and Tyler Derek coming up big, and Lucas Turchi finishing the job. Akeem Ward kind of ran out of steam. Hendersong plays it out. Williams with the opportunity. Great save from Turchi or from. Uh, Derek and then Turchi cleaning up the mess. Amazing save from Tyler Derek. Really, Augustine Williams, he lifted the ball and had pace on it as well. Did 
pretty much everything you want your striker to do in front of goal, but Tyler Derrick just stood really strong there. We'll see if that can lift 901 FC to, to get something out of it. Hendersong trying to post up. And eventually we're going to see a foul given. Free kick late, late, late in this game. 901 FC two goals down. If you're going to come back, it's got to happen quick. Hakeem Ward, long ball looking for the run of Dylan Borsak, who got there. And again, that header, not necessarily where he wanted to be, but boy, he made a run and surprised everyone between the two central defenders. Tremendous ball from Hakeem Ward and Dylan Borsak. A great run right down the heart of the defense. You can see Yannick Ertl just yelling at his defense like, guys, what are we doing? You know, we still there's still time left in this match. Let's finish it strong. And Tyler Derrick with an unforced error there throwing the ball out of play will be a throw to Indy 11. Yeah, it was a terrific ball that split the defense. McKeem Ward and I don't think that, that Indy 11 communicated very well. Didn't realize that Dylan Borzak was coming through that spot. Now Turchi look at the physicality as the big man earns a goal kick he's been outstanding since coming on as has marlon santos nice touch one two cariaga working with duncan and now cariaga opening up those legs a little bit gets it to borzak borzak and cariaga back and forth to each other over to duncan duncan now von Stieg and don't have time for a lot of build-up play you gotta make things happen a little bit quickly if you're 901 FC playing it out to the left side Ward got four in the box to aim for but couldn't get the cross away Endersong is able to poke it through a little assist from the youngster there getting that quick throw back to Duncan Duncan now floats one in just over the head of a running Dylan Borzak claimed up top by Ertl into the 90th minute we go 2-0 One touch and then bang out to Collier. Collier 1v1 against Von Steeg. Great job, Von Steeg. And he's going to draw that foul. Got that foot in. Perfect tackle. Collier with the foul. Six minutes of added time is going to be the call. And that is, it gives you a little opportunity there. Now, Borzak plays it to Nico Brett. Save made, but Ertl didn't know a lot about it, and that ball was deflected into a dangerous area. Finally cleared away. It'll be an opportunity from the corner kick. It's a great ball by Borchek, and you see Nico Brett with the rip. Yannick Ertl earning his keep now with the pair. You see him just absolutely ripping into his defense, telling him, guys, there's once again, there's still time left in this match. Low ball comes in. It's going to be hit again. They wild bicycle kick. It's a goal. Unbelievable goal. 901 FC. My word, was that Sissoko? It was the center back. Where did that come from? Incredible. 2 1. And there is life. In 901 FC yet. What an incredible goal by Sissoko, the big center back, lifting his team on. You see this crowd getting into it. Finally, a goal for 901 FC, a shot on goal as well here in the 92nd minute. Now Turchi playing it up as all of a sudden a little extra energy from 901 FC as they are sniffing away back into this match. And they've got five more minutes to work with. What an incredible finish from Abdullahi Sissoko. You would probably least expect him out of everybody on the pitch to be able to pull that bicycle kick off, but that was incredible. Pulled off an absolute worldie. As you see on the replay here, the corner kick from Akeem Ward just goes across the six-yard box. You see just Sissoko takes it out of the air from an impossible angle with the bicycle kick. I mean, this is a great angle here. As it pops up and just chips it right over Ertl and what incredible. a goal that was from Sissoko. Absolutely incredible. I mean, it was it was a it had to be chipped over delicately. I, I, it's 
remarkable. Remarkable from Abdullahi Sissoko. Cuts the lead to just one goal. We'll see what happens. Ooh, that was a nasty challenge there. He might be lucky just to get away with a yellow card. Goodness gracious. Just onto the pitch there. You see 901 FC getting all the players except leaving one guy back, Karyaga and Akeem Ward, the only two guys at midfield. And this could be a, a dangerous opportunity for 901 FC. Eddie O'Brien just barely on the pitch. Ball played over nowhere in particular. But now Indy 11 with a little pressure gives the ball away. Akeem Ward, edge of the area. Ward still with it. Vom Steen can't bring it under control. And now Derek comes out. Ooh, dangerous, dangerous play. And Derek, ooh, they're going to say that's a throw to Indy 11. I'm not so sure about that one. That looked like it went off of Williams as well. Derek. Risky play. He's also going to get a yellow card for not giving the ball back immediately as he kind of rolled the ball away. It's a huge challenge from Ty, uh, Tyler Derrick. He had to get that one right. Peter Augustine Williams was in on goal or it was going to be a red card, and Tyler Derrick did get that one right. Big tackle, potentially goal saving tackle. Two minutes or so left to play in this game, and 901 FC all of a sudden with a little bit of life. From Abdullahi Sissoko, who makes a great challenge there, earns the throw. Sissoko's incredible overhead kick. One of the guys you would least expect to see something like that from. Couldn't have been any better. And now, get down that pitch. Akeem Ward, with his head up, plays that one with his right foot. Looking up for Marlon Santos. Santos scrapping there with King. And then look at Ward winning it back, playing it up. For Carriaga, ball is out of play quickly for the throw. Marlon Santos taking it, and now backing up is Nico Brett. Ball headed away and cleared out temporarily, but only to Turchi, who takes a tidy touch to Sissoko. Back to Turchi, minute and a half left to play. All the pressure now starting to tell. Carriaga forced it back. Turchi just playing it up into the box, headed away by Indy 11, back to Sissoko. Sissoko now with a cross into a dangerous area. Santos was charging, but Indy 11 with the clearance. And now, oh, Carriaga is gonna be whistled for, that's a shoulder to shoulder challenge. That is, I'm surprised, a real bailout for Indy 11 there. Haven't seen that foul whistled all game, but to see it at this point, I don't know about that one. Yeah, there's just not much there. That's a shoulder yeah. to shoulder. You can... Shoulder to shoulder. Henderson Song just knew nothing about yeah. it. He wasn't, or Hinder Long, excuse me, he knew nothing, nothing about it. He wasn't paying attention to what was behind him, and Carriaga just got him with a, a clean shoulder to shoulder shot. Now Indy 11 in no hurry to take this free kick as they are hanging on, even though they're a man up in this match. 901 FC has really turned the heat up in the last 10 minutes or so. One final chance. Headed on. Maybe too little too late for 901 FC here. That ball is cleared. Anywhere will do for Indy 11 at this point. As we have played the six minutes of added time. Referee is, you may have caught on that Nat feed. The fourth official saying 40 more seconds of time. So that means you better get it up the pitch awfully quickly and so far that's not happening for 901 FC now the throw now the throw here it comes here's your last chance Brett playing it out wide and does have a man making that run is Bob Stieg slides to keep it in Borzak uh, was there but unable to get to the ball in time now this is definitely it right here the long throw from Duncan and that is that. What a finish to this match. Ultimately, Memphis 901 FC coming up a little bit short. Vastly improved second half performance highlighted by another goal of the week candidate from Abdullahi Sissoko in the 91st minute. 
We got a late red card coming in. Is was that Sissoko who got red carded at the end of the match? Might have been a King Ward. We have a late red card after the final whistle. Stephen Glass. I, 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 I think it may have been Sissoko. We'll have to check. Either way, it's a final 2 1. We'll come back. We'll figure all this out, get you some final stats and highlights as well when we return to USL Championship Soccer. Well, that was a contentious finish to uh, a little bit of a strange game. When all is said and done, it's Indy 11 who come away with the three points. Two to one is the final. Peter Edmiston alongside J.J. Greer. And uh, J.J., that one was, was, uh, was a much better second half for Memphis 901 FC. Had nine shots and five on target in the second half. A man down against Indy 11 certainly improved in, in every facet except for that final score and got the red card to Oscar Jimenez and they got another red card after the match. I think it was I'm still waiting for confirmation on that, but I do believe it was to Akeem Ward. So that's going to be uh, difficult for 901 FC, but you can take a lot from that second half. Absolutely. As disappointed as Stephen Glass must have been at halftime, I think he can almost be equally as proud after the game in terms of how the second half was played, right? Now, there are no moral victories in this league, right? You still uh, get zero points. You pick up no points at home, which, which you never want to do, of course. But, uh, you know, the first half was what it was. You went down 2-0. Uh, you went down, down a man as well. So, uh, But to be able to come back and at least get a goal back and have the chance to tie it up, down a man, you know, that, that speaks volumes of the character of this team. Yeah, I think it's certainly something that you can you can take from it if you are uh, Stephen Glass and the coaching staff, although it is going to make things uh, a little tricky as you're going to be without Oscar Jimenez and potentially without Akeem Ward. Those are your two uh, starting fullbacks for this match. Uh, you could be without them in Sacramento uh, in two weeks' time when uh, Memphis 901 FC is back out on the pitch on the road against a tough opponent but you know that, that second half a man down was certainly much much better from 901 fc and you know that first half not up to the standard that we have uh, come to expect from stephen glass and his group it is a final here from AutoZone park 
Indy 11 takes home the three points with a 2-1 victory. They had a 2-1 loss last week, 9-1 FC with a 2-1 win last week, and now a 2-1 win for Indy and a 2-1 loss for 9-1 FC. It's been nothing but two ones. We'll see if that's the case again. In two weeks' time, we'll be back with you against Sacramento Republic FC. For J.J. Greer and all of our crew, I'm Peter Edmiston. Have a lovely St. Patrick's Day weekend. Thanks for joining us here on USL Championship Soccer. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.